last night. The Quebec Nordiques, they have won three in a row. The Montreal Canadiens and Quebec on top in the Adams Division. Buffalo, uh, three points back. And tonight, the Canadiens are in action against Pittsburgh. Buffalo does have a game in hand over Montreal. And the Quebec Nordiques coming into this game tonight. But, Mike, last night, for a while, it looked like, uh, well, the Sabres are going to have a tough time against the uh, Whalers. What'd you do to your hair? Well, a lot of guys grow beards, and I decided to just change my hairstyle. Well, they, they did finish up very well, thanks to Gates Orlando. That was a sensational goal, Ted. He, yeah, Ted, I, I know why they call you a darling now, by the way, and this is right. extremely embarrassing. This is a serious game tonight, and what are you doing with that thing on your head? You look like a long-haired hippie freak. Thanks, Mike. And uh, we'll be along with this game between the Quebec Nordiques and the Buffalo Sabres in just a moment. So please, stay tuned, won't you? We we'll, should have a good one here tonight. You're wa watching Buffalo Sabres Hockey. Guten Abend, meine Herrschaften. Ich bin Dieter Weber, Bruder von Pete Weber. Als Eishockey-Professor an der Universität Oberammergau, es tut mir leid, dass nur Uli Hiemer jetzt als Deutscher in euren NHL spielt. Was ist mit Ihnen in Amerika los? Erinnern Sie nicht Walter Kachuk aus Emsdetten? Und worüber Eric Kuhnhacker und Karl Friesen, die zu Hause jetzt in Deutschland bleiben? Die sind Weltklasse Spieler, nicht? Ach, Entschuldigung. Aber ich liebe mein Vaterland so viel. Und jetzt haben wir das Nationallied der Tschechoslowakei. We're taking you behind the scenes in this intermission this evening. Our guest is going to be one of the very overlooked members of the Sabres production crew. Chuck Telesco, the low cameraman, is going to be joining us here momentarily in the studio. This is what he goes through every night. He has to go through an awful lot to help bring you those excellent low shots here from Memorial Auditorium. And Chuck, first of all, it was a pretty tough period for you, I guess, so once again, eh? Well, well Pete, I, you know, it's really hard out there. You know, you get going and with the crowd out there and the people and the fans and the guys boarding, it's, it's not easy, you know. I, are the fans pretty tough on you? Anyone right around you that gives you a particularly a high amount of grief? Well, uh, Jerry Meehan now sits up right behind me, and, you know, he throws popcorn at me, and, you know, and, and if I'm talking to some of the ladies, we have the annual cookie exchange at Christmas time down there, and he got a set this year, and he wasn't involved, but those are some of the harder moments that we run into down there with low camera, and it's just... <laughs> Excuse me, I just, it's been a rough period, and I'm... Well, indeed, things get awfully difficult for you, and I wonder what it's like before every game we see you approaching the trainers for visiting teams, and indeed some of the players, to see if you can get something free from them, like a, a stick, their gloves, their sweaters. Well, freebies are part of the game. You know, we usually sign a payola form which says we can't, but, you know, our executive producer, Paul Whelan, sits in the truck outside. Now, he doesn't know if I'm, what I'm doing down here. Now, I had to fight three people today to get this hugger. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a not security guard and two old ladies down there off to get this. What are these pucks worth in the black market? Well, right now, a good saber puck now, if the, uh, if Dretzky had touched it, it's worth at least $55, $57 on the open market right at the moment. And that's heavy money now. We don't... Uh, what if Dave Semenko touched it? Well, no, nothing against Dave. You know, he has his moments, too, out there, but uh, I'd say thirty-seven fifty. All going. right. Let's... Would you like a decal? I picked up a few of these earlier. Always ready to make a deal. Chuck Telesco, low camera. Low camera is always there. You're watching Buffalo Sabres Hockey. Okay, well, you know, we have something new tonight. It's called Activision Bruce. It's something we're going to bring into hockey probably for the first time. We're going to have something to show you right now, and this is rather interesting. This is a very interesting play by the Buffalo Sabres late in the first period, by the way. All right, yes, I remember this play. Yeah, you know, this is where Schoenfeld, I think, comes in. I think it is. Isn't that... Oh, they scored on that. No, that wasn't the one they... Uh, that was the it was a hand was that a hand pass we saw there well uh, we, whether it's a hand pass or not uh, but i you know the thing is the body or you something. you watch activision enough and i'll tell you you really get to like activision more than the other way and it, it I just seemed so. to pick up more i you know the, i enjoy the, watching the plays it. happen so much quicker don't they yes the, the puck seems to move around quicker and disappear and things like that especially really. you have guys that are going slow they seem to speed up and that's so right. there's really yeah. there's nobody they're really here, pulling the ladder out there yeah, a lot of times right. you go into a game and you'll say look at this player he can't skate fast enough you have to right. move him up 
a little yeah. bit, take the forward, put him back in defense because he's not that good a skater. But it doesn't make that much difference That's when great. you watch an act division. We'll be back for more of our intermission, and you're watching Sabres Hockey. It's time we tell you some of the secrets of the National Hockey League. We've taken a poll. We found out the top hooker in the National Hockey League is Greg Malone, and he of the Hartford Whalers. Now, he plays the center on the checking line for the Whalers quite a bit. Are you happy as a hooker, Greg? Well, you know, we have a lot of fun out there when we're out there, and, and uh, you know, it's... It's a lot easier going out there and hooking somebody than trying to uh, skate back and uh, rub them off in the boards. So this is a lazy man's way to uh, get back at the players. Kind of helps your career last a little bit longer being a hooker like this, huh? Well, it, it certainly does. You know, the main thing is, is you know, you can get it right up there underneath the arm and give a little tug at it and stuff. And uh, you know, when, when that happens, uh, type of thing, it throws a guy off stride. And uh, like I says, uh, you know, hopefully you can tug him hard enough and the puck may spin off his stick and the defenseman can pick it up or something. Now, which hookers were your idol as a youngster? Well, you know, uh, that's hard to say right now. You know, uh, I, I think Mike Zook and I are my team right now. I, I kind of followed in his footsteps ever since he came over from uh, St. Louis and stuff. I kind of took up off uh, for him, especially on the road. We get out there, and he, he likes to hook a lot on the road. Well, let's take a look at what your hooking grip entails and exactly how you go after this art of hooking in the National mm -hmm. Hockey League, if we could. Well, you got to make sure the hands are separated a little bit on the part. you got to, instead of down here, you just have it back here a little bit. Then you get that stick up in here, and you just tug it right behind him. If you especially get him up around the armpits, you can hook it really good into him because what happens, if you get it up there, especially if you get under the sleeve or whatever, you can get under their shirt there and rip their skin a little bit. That's a really nice thing to think about. Next time when Greg Malone joins us, he's going to tell us how he uses Velcro tape on his stick so it sticks right to the player's uniform sweater. That's it with Greg Malone, the National Hockey League's top hooker. You're watching Buffalo Sabres Hockey. And next on BSTV, in our never-ending attempts to bring more serious programming to cable, our first in a series of point counterpoints. Tonight's question, was it tougher being an NHL referee or is it tougher being a player? Speaking on the side of the referees, a man with over 18 years officiating in the NHL, Mr. Bruce Hood. Well, there isn't any question at all. It's a much tougher job to be a referee. You have to be on the ice for 60 minutes of intense action and be prepared to do the job. And now speaking for the players, a man reported to be the dirtiest player ever to lace up a pair of skates, Mr. Pierre Puck. I can't get no bad reaction and I try. Oh, I'm sorry, I was listening to my Nufi blaster. Take my Nufi blaster there. No question to be the player is the hardest, the toughest part, because this man, how many years? 18 years this guy be a referee there. They finally rode the man out, they got rid of that guy. 18 years, I thought he was a bum. I watched the cable game, I'll tell you something. I have changed my opinion. You used to be a bum, but now that you're not a referee no more, you're a bigger bum than ever. This guy, he said, oh, I didn't feel good. I didn't think I could come down to the cable game tonight because I stormed the curtain. I was out fooling around. I was come across the ice, got hit by the Zamboni machine. I come on the cable thing. I am not afraid. That man is a bum. There. These are very serious accusations, Mr. Hood. I don't know how to react to my... Well, you should react. I'll tell you I, how the man react there. I, I, 16 years ago, I, you remember Montreal I, I, there? You remember Montreal? Yeah, I go yeah. into the restaurant in Montreal. This man be there, supposed to be a referee. He see everything on the ice that go wrong there, right? He break up all the best fights there, but he doesn't do it there. He sends those wimpy little guys, those linesmen, they skate down there like this, and they say, stop fights. Stop. He stands back there like this. Don't you boys fight there, you know? Big sissy. I mean, do you ever see the way they call offsides and everything like that? They go, who? Offsides. Who? And, and when you, how do you, show us how you give misconduct. Go ahead there. How do you say misconduct? Like this. <laughs> and the name is even Bruce there. Are you kidding me? Come on with this guy. Should be wearing a dress instead of that striped taffeta thing there. <laughs> Mr. Hood, do you think that the fact that your name is Bruce has anything to do with the fact that maybe you had to be a tougher referee? Might have been. Maybe guys uh, like Andy don't have to be as tough as what uh, you had. I was actually slated to be a hairdresser, and uh, sure, I ended up sure. as a referee. He'd be tough there. This be tough. You know what that is? Those are my first teeth. Those are not my baby teeth. This man have all his teeth. If he be so tough, how come he have all his teeth? I remember him as a hockey player. He was worse than he is on is here. Is that true? Mr. Puck, I, I, I see that you wear a helmet, though, when you play. 
Mr. Hood won 18 years, never wore a helmet. I know. A lot of times he fall into the goal. That's why he don't see too good. This is my original Butch Goring model helmet there. This is really rough, tough helmet there. My own personal helmet there. You know where, you know where a referee come from there? You know where these guys come from there? They come from the ice capades. They come from the ice follies. And more recently, they come from Disney on ice. And because of guys like him, kids don't get to see no good skating with Dumbo and all that stuff. He used to be Tinkerbell there. That's not so bad. Is it true that you were Tinkerbell before you started being an NHL that's, referee? That's right. That's where I first got my start. And uh, that's not so bad. It paid better than uh, officiating in the National Hockey League. Well, I tell you something. This guy, I can't believe this guy here. There, you know, I mean, he never do nothing rough. He never do nothing tough. I did. I stopped 200 fights personally. They talk about violence. I personally stopped 200 fights with my face. I believe that. It appears that way. Hmm, this is interesting. Now, you say that definitely to be a player, it's much tougher than to be a referee. Oh, no question about it there. You see, see, guys, they show up, they stay in luxury hotels. We sleep on the bus there. Where's this guy? He's over at the Statler or someplace there. Hmm. Mr. Hood, is that true? Have you never slept on a bus in your entire life? As a matter of fact, uh, that's how I made my extra salary. I traveled by bus, and we had to sleep on overnight buses, so I know what it was like. That was a tough one. I felt oh, sorry for the hockey tough. players. Oh, sure, he feels sorry for the hockey players. Sure, he does. Any parent out there, I mean, you'd be proud to have a son play in National Hockey League. Any parent out there breaks it, oh, my son, he'd be National Hockey League referee. You wouldn't tell nobody that there. You want your neighbors to know that your son wear a stupid shirt like this? We don't even know. Is it white shirt with black stripes? Is it black shirt with white stripes? Is this with pajamas? What is it there? And who is he in mourning for? What's these silly marks on there? I can't believe it there. I want to talk about a new product called Ref Off. For all you boys and girls who play hockey now, you get this from me. I sell this now because I'm being retired. It's Ref Off. You see, you spray a little bit of this around and it make the referee disappear. And you should use a little under your arm, by the way, there. I'll tell you something, boy. Here we go. Ref Off. I can't believe this. I don't even want to. Well, that wraps That's up nice. another like segment of nice point counterpoint. Gentlemen, I think we have heard it. Long get enough. out of here. Oh, yeah, here. sure. You ain't. Okay, I get out of here. I'll be happy to get out of here. Cut you long. Tuesday. Stay tuned. More of our post-game coverage to come. Yet Ted Darling will be in with NHL Report. Again, the Sabres victors this evening over the Quebec Nordiques 3-1. Take care now. Hi, I'm Ralph Sincere. Hello. Hi, I'm Ralph Sincere, as I said before, and sincerely want to welcome you to the world premiere of the world service of BSTV. Later this month, we'll have other attractions, including the Preppy Frisbee Championship from the campus of Western Reserve Academy in Hudson, Ohio. And on the 10th, we'll have Harvard and Bryn Mawr in horizontal rugby. And we want you to know that tonight's game is being brought to you through the special cooperation of your cable system. If in the next few minutes you see an asterisk flashing in the upper left-hand corner of your home screen, you will be billed $3 in next month's cable billing. That's the way it is here at BSTV. We're certainly happy to have you aboard. On behalf of myself, Ralph Sincere, have a good evening.